Thank you so much for being with us today, sir. And I'd like to ask you a few questions regarding uh, obesity and how big a problem it is worldwide today. Yeah, sure. It's yeah. been a pleasure to be here and uh, please, please shoot straight up. <laughs> okay, sir. So, uh, what are the ways to treat obesity in today's time? So, obesity is a big, big, big problem, right? Today, the world, and today is uh, World Health Day. And all the more reason because it's today is World Health Day, I think we need to tackle one of the biggest problems that's facing us today, and that's obesity. Obesity today has been declared as a lifelong life-threatening, uh, chronic, relapsing disease of excess weight, which causes a lot of side effects which come in terms of diabetes, blood pressure, hypertension, sleep apnea, infertility, you name it. And they say that 40 different types of cancers are directly linked to obesity today. So uh, it's no longer simply putting on a little more kilos here and there and looking plump. Today, obesity is the biggest killer and it's the mothership of all diseases. All right, so that's, that's good to know. Thank you. And uh, how uh, dangerous is this weight loss surgery? <laughs> you know, I get this question quite yeah. often. <laughs> and most people think that uh, weight loss surgery is dangerous. Yeah. Actually, um, you know, there were statistics done in the United States and okay. as well as the rest of the world which say that this surgery ranks in terms of uh, mortality rates, almost like doing a gallbladder surgery or having even a C-section, like uh, 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 delivering a baby yeah. or, or a hernia surgery. So I think we, there, there is something which is like a fact and something which is a myth. And most of the times, the problem with bariatric surgery, there's a lot more myths than actual facts that people know about. Today, this is... Uh, a surgery which has a mortality rate of less than 1% in best hands and it is with those patients who are diabetic, sleep apneic, have a host of diseases, they're at least 200 kilos or 150 kilos and above there. So they are, they're really sick patients and still to have very successful outcomes and it's, it takes, they say that you aim two birds at one stone, in with bariatric surgery you can eat 10 birds with one stone. So you treat diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, uh, maybe sleep apnea, maybe infertility, maybe uh, stress urinary incontinence and everything else that comes with it. Yeah, uh, speaking about myths, there are a few myths that we'd like to clear about like uh, uh, there are more chances of death post-surgery than uh, of dying of obesity. That's one of the myths that we hear so often. So. Yeah, okay, so there, was, there, are, there are at least five studies that I can name off the cuff that have said that if you're obese and you're diabetic, the chances of you dying at 10 years is uh, around 95%. And if you've had surgery, the chance of you dying is less than 5%. Okay. <laughs> there is uh, studies by uh, Flum, Chris too. There are studies by various, various authors all across the world. All have proven beyond doubt that it's safer to have bariatric surgery. The chance of you living longer with complications like diabetes, hypertension, various other things is much, much better. So I think we should once and for all do away with this terminology saying obesity or bariatric surgery causes more deaths than if you were not to have surgery. All right. So uh, how does it work after the surgery, sir? Do people have deficiencies regarding vitamins or minerals or whatever post the surgery? You know, the, the shocking fact is that we did a study in India which said that uh, more than 50% of our patients were iron deficient to start with, vitamin D deficient because vitamin D, fat interferes with vitamin D metabolism, calcium deficient, B12 deficient. So these were the patients who already had this host of deficiencies. And we never used to do these tests before bariatric surgery. And we used to think that bariatric surgery caused all these deficiencies. Now we've proven it without doubt that Yes, you do get some deficiencies because in certain bypass operations, at least the conventional bypass operations, there will be some protein and some de mineral deficiency, especially B12, calcium and iron. But um, if you were to supplement yourself, I would rather say, would you rather take pop pills of multivitamins once or twice a day? Or would you rather take medicines for diabetes, hypertension, sleep apnea, uh, yeah. infertility and various other things? So the choice yeah. is yours. Yeah. So, uh, one of the people who are following us today uh, wants to know if food is the main problem for obesity today. Food? Yeah, food intake, uh, the kind yeah, of food. You know, they say that 5% of all causes of obesity are genetic, another 5% are hormonal, 90% is lifestyle related. So, 
it's how much intake and how much output, right? It's a simple mathematical formula. Outputs seem to be very less. <laughs> Today, as I can see this camera in front of me, this is the apple that we are so fond of. We forget the apple that we actually have to eat, the fresh fruit that we have to eat. So that's how the world has changed. Fast food, lifestyle, culture, today in the, in the Middle East, it's a massive problem because it's become so easy to go out and, and have a cola drink, have something which is sugary without even realizing how many calories we are guzzling down. Yeah. All right. So do, uh, do we regain the weight that we lose after this surgery? So, and how easy it is for us to maintain that weight that we lose? So there are various types of surgery that one can do. All right. Um, there is the sleeve gastrectomy where you remove a part of the stomach and make the stomach like a thin tube. So your intake comes down. If you're not careful and you don't diet and exercise, uh, at least you don't exercise and spend uh, some time at least uh, in terms of looking after and are totally uncareful in terms of what you eat, then there is a some degree of chance that you might regain. Not all your weight, but you might regain at least 20 or 30% of the weight you've lost. Yeah. Uh, with other surgeries like the gastric bypass or the banded gastric bypass, the chances of weight regain are even less. Today, there's another surgery which is quite popular across the world. That's the only anastomosis gastric bypass, which is again very popular in this region. So for all those patients who are 40, 50 years of age, uh, there's a very good chance that you might not regain some weight with this surgery. Okay, sir. So one of uh, the people who are following us wants to know, uh, what is the procedure uh, of this surgery? Like, how do you go about it? Just in a nutshell, if you can put it in. So most of these procedures run laparoscopically. We now are doing this procedure completely through your navel. So that's, that's a single incision surgery. It's almost scarless because your navel is the only scarred area of the human body. We can do a lot of these procedures even endoscopically now, wherein we can go and stitch up your stomach just through your mouth and uh, you can wake up without any scars at all. So uh, I think gone are the days when we used to do open surgeries, big cuts and various other things. I think today that the era of laparoscopy surgery, single incident surgery and endoscopy has come that's made bariatric surgery more palatable to people, more safer with earlier uh, and faster recovery times. Yes sir, also is uh, the scarless bariatric surgery as effective as the conventional laparoscopic uh, weight loss surgery? In fact, it's not only as effective in terms of weight loss, in terms of uh, resolution of diabetes, hypertension, various other things, but it's also as effective. So. Uh, you know, quite often uh, I have a lot of young girls who come up to me and they've, they've asked me, you know, I don't want to talk about my surgery. How do I, uh, uh, how can I do it? And my only answer to them is I will, I will give you a surgery uh, wherein if you were to choose a bikini tomorrow, you will have no scars to tell your story. So okay. yes, uh, scarless surgery is equally effective, is equally good. I think you should go and try it uh, if your surgeon feels that he can do it if equally effective and well then that's the only surgery you should be doing. All right sir. What are the uh, common psychological impacts that people face after the weight loss surgery? You know there um, are a lot of uh, studies which have shown that most people who are already obese face a lot of social discrimination in terms of their job, their workplace as well as uh, family life. And that is why usually they have a lot of psychosocial issues to begin with. Uh, bariatric surgery makes you lose weight. It makes you feel more positive about yourself, gives you much, much more confidence. And so sometimes when people are completely sidelined side and ridiculed for years and years because of their weight, and when they get this confidence back, I think it's a complete different. And those people who've put them down for years and years cannot, cannot accept this new confident self of this new person. And so I think they bring up some issues with certain people. Yeah, all right. So what, uh, what is the age in which would you would suggest that they could go ahead for the surgery? Because uh, nowadays we even have youngsters who are uh, obese. So what is the ideal age would, which you would say that would be just perfect for a surgery? You know, I'm not very comfortable with uh, operating on kids, at least uh, juveniles I'm not very, very comfortable. Pediatric okay. age group I'm not comfortable. Okay. But I'm pretty comfortable with operating on uh, a kid. So I would rather say nothing under 13, okay. preferably above 18 years of age. 13 to 18, you would say that if this patient is already so high risk that he's getting a host of problems like diabetes, hypertension, sleep apnea, and various other things, then that's a problem. But 
Otherwise, I would say between 18 to 65 years of age is the conventional age that we do operate. However, 65 is not a cutoff. If someone were to be 70 years of age and were to be fit enough, then that's again a good enough uh, person you can operate on. Yeah, that's right. So, does uh, the patient return to a normal lifestyle with uh, normal diet and exercise or is there uh, another routine that they have to follow? How different is, is it post the surgery? So initially post bariatric surgery what happens is that you go on a liquid diet for the first 15 days. You actually start off with a liquid diet around a week or so to 10 days before surgery because you have to prepare your liver and the patient needs to get prepared for a life of eating little less food afterwards. So first 15 days including the first week after uh, uh, before bariatric surgery is liquid diet. After that, you go into semi-solid diet, so you can eat mashed food and various other things. And closer to a month, you start eating normal food. Now, please understand that the first four to five months are going to take you time to adjust. So don't be, don't be hasty. Don't rush into eating a normal falafel sandwich the next day after you've had bariatric surgery or there will be problems. Uh, I think there will be a time, a place wherein you can eat all kinds of food uh, without a problem. What bariatric surgery does is, compared to conventional dieting is that with conventional dieting you're only told to eat salads which are very healthy without salad dressings mind you you're told to eat certain, only certain portions of food bariatric surgery gives you that option of going out with friends and probably eating a pizza maybe two slices of pizza going out eating a halloumi sandwich if you want but being happy and satisfied at the end of it and and standing on a weight scale the next day and knowing that you're not going to put on weight all right. A lot of people want to know if they could choose to do a bariatric surgery after the delivery, like post-delivery, to lose the post-delivery fat. No, actually, that's not the correct thing because uh, any post-delivery fat is not, it's a cosmetic thing, right? Bariatric surgery is not cosmetic. Bariatric surgery is life-saving surgery. It's meant for diseases that morbid obesity gets. It's not meant for the cosmetic 5 and 10 kilos. Yeah. So please don't even attempt to do it uh, because that's not the right thing to do. Okay, okay. And uh, how painful is this whole process? Sir? How long does it take for us to get back to normal or recover? So quite this? unlike uh, liposuction and tummy tucks and various other cosmetic procedures which might sometimes be painful because of the enormity of the surgery. This is our laparoscopic surgery. Now with most laparoscopy surgery we all know that by next day you go home. And with scarless surgery or, or endoscopic surgeries the pain is even less. So I think you almost go off uh, of painkillers in the first two or three days. If you were to get pain beyond that, then it's time to see your bariatric surgeon because there might be a problem with that. Okay, okay. So basically you're saying even the quality of the life of the person also improves after this kind of surgery, right? Yeah, it dramatically improves. Self-confidence, your personality changes, uh, you wear lovely clothes and various other things. So the only thing that sometimes you have... Uh, husbands uh, telling us is that they've spent more on the clothes that their wives have changed uh, rather than on the bariatric surgery person. Okay, so how many kgs do people usually lose in this kind of surgery? Are we talking about just 30-40 uh, uh, kilos or even more? It depends on how much excess you are and what type of surgery you've had and how much time frame after bariatric surgery. On an average people would lose around 30% of their total body weight loss with bariatric surgery. Okay, okay. okay. So that's a proxy. So if you were to be 200 kilos, you'd lose close to 100 odd kilos. Okay. If you were to be only 110 kilos, you'd lose maybe 30 odd kilos. Okay. Okay. So it depends on how much how much excess, excess you, have. you have. So uh, do you consult uh, for or uh, do you have a small seminars for potential patients because there are a lot of people who don't know whether they have to opt for this kind of surgery? In fact, we regularly conduct uh, patient awareness programs and patient okay. support groups because I think it's very, very vital. Yeah. Because what happens is that someone who's had bariatric surgery is the best person to tell someone else, that, listen, this is what I've had and this is how effective it has been. Okay. So uh, that would be like an interactive session between people who have already been through the surgery. Yes. Plus people who want to do surgery, people who've lost weight in any form. So okay. we, we have support group meetings of people all across okay that's great so there are a lot of people who weigh more than 200 kilos or so and uh, they have been typing down comments asking us whether they could consult you or even if they should ask uh, their old parents to uh, go through the surgery so they could have a normal life again so would you suggest for them to come forward so I think uh, if you're 200 kilos and above and you've tried everything and I know my friends that you've tried everything and failed, it's not your fault, all right? Give us a chance to give you a second chance at life. 
we are there we will help you to get back onto track so let nobody tell you that that's the end of the road there is always that uh, light at the end of the tunnel i think we are here to help you don't worry if you if you think you're not fit enough or not healthy enough to undergo the surgery that's our job to tell you but otherwise i think uh, another fresh new lease of life just awaits you so do contact us yeah so there is a uh, lara jajur who is saying that her mom is 65 years old and she weighs around 220 kilos so would you suggest for her to go through the surgery at this age and uh, how helpful is it going to be so lana we've operated a lot of patients of your mom's age yeah and you would understand and you would be really distraught to know that your mom can't move around just because of her weight and her lifestyle her quality of life has completely taken a hit and i know as a doctor you'd be very very concerned so what i would tell you is that to get her get her to see us and if we believe that she's fit enough it 65 is just a number but if we believe that she's fit enough from a heart point of view and other comorbidity point of view then your mom can undergo the surgery okay so there is another person who's saying that uh, he is 90 ki- uh, kilos and uh, 167 cm so uh, would would he have to come so he is grade 1 obesity or grade 2 obesity at best okay. so if he were to be a diabetic uh, uh, or having one of the other comorbidities then he would become a candidate for surgery otherwise i think we we have other programs like diet exercise drugs like uh, um, exenatide and and various other other new drugs that are available today saxenda and dilaglutide and various other things that you can try there are options like the balloon and various other things not necessary surgery if you are 90 kilos and don't have diabetes but if you've got diabetes then maybe you should consider surgery okay speaking of that sir there are a lot of people who are actually obese and develop blood pressure and diabetes and all other sorts of issues will it be okay for them to go under the knife for this Means they are the ideal candidates today. You know, uh, conservative societies like the American Diabetes Association, the International Diabetes Federation, all in their guidelines today say that if you were to be obese and you're diabetic and you've not controlled your sugars with whatever best you've tried, then you should give surgery a chance. Okay. And uh, what about all those people who have already gone uh, under a, a major surgery in their lives? Like, for example, even women who have gone under C-section. would you uh, suggest this surgery for them after something of this sort has happened no that's not a problem at all they can they can have surgery uh, absolutely normally and c section is just a minor surgery so uh, it's another way of delivering a baby right so i don't think even if you had uh, various other complicated surgeries i think you're fit enough if your doctor feels that you're fit enough to undergo the surgery then you should get the surgery done okay so uh, does the patient uh in uh, you saying that they improve the quality of life to a large extent right so for the potential patients can we expect something uh in the coming uh time that you could uh, come up with some uh seminar for them over here yeah so we've been doing some seminars in uh dubai and we will be doing more and more of them so please watch out for our personal space and you'll know uh, when we are doing this next seminar okay so afra mahmood writes there that she is uh, 220 kilos but she is diabetic highly so uh, would you suggest this for her i don't know how old you are but what i would say is that if you've not ha- not seen a bariatric surgeon please call up and go and see him tomorrow because okay. that is going to completely change your life okay sir so could you also share a few experiences that you had with people who came came up to you with uh, who were not so sure about going under the surgery but then their life transformed after the surgery so we've had we've had you know all sorts of people we've had from uh, young girls who wanted to basically get operated because they nobody's ready to get married to them and we've had young girls who almost hate their mother and sister only because they are thinner and she's not so a lot of social uh, psychosocial issues and my main concern is that you know they've tried their best uh, they've tried dieting they've tried exercise and nobody undergo surgery right up front but don't discount the option that surgery does give you another chance uh, at getting fitter getting healthier for those diabetics rather than going undergoing a a uh, complete renal shutdown wherein you need your kidneys to pack up on you and you need a renal transplant 
think of it differently, try and take a solution. When you start pro passing enough protein in your urine and you're diabetic and not getting controlled, despite increasing one medical count to the other, to insulin, to various other things, maybe give bariatric surgery a chance if you're obese. I've actually operated on, on patients whose uh, main aim was to jump out of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, okay? Mm -hmm. Because they were so obese they couldn't. This gave them the chance to do that. It also... Uh, there was once a mechanic I operated on and he got operated on. Why? Because he couldn't get under the car to uh, repair his cars. So various people have come, various people have got operated from uh, politicians to, to stars to various people from all different walks of life. I think bariatric surgery has given them the chance to get better, fitter and healthier. So I think you should not stay okay. away from it for too long. Uh, as we mentioned before, you wouldn't uh, uh, suggest for people who are younger than 18 to be a part of, like children to be a part of this surgery. But uh, does that mean 18 years and above shouldn't be a problem because Joe Ibrahim wants to know? So yeah, uh, above 18 is, is you should be prepared because by that time you've developed uh, most of your growth hormones and you've developed completely as an adult. So should not be a problem. So between 13 and 18 only if you've achieved maturity and you, you are at a serious risk to health and you've tried all other forms of non-surgical methods, then you should attempt surgery. Okay, so Joe Ibrahim also asks if the age, if the right age to do the surgery differs from the male and the female. Like, is there any particular age that the male has to, uh, you know, or for the female for that matter? So the only difference is that women have two sets of issues, okay? One is that menarche when they start getting their periods and that's when uh, polycystic ovarian disease kicks in and they start putting on weight. And the second time is when they become menopausal, when after around 48 or 50, they stop getting their periods. And then what happens is that they tend to put on weight. So other than that, men and women are the same. So it doesn't matter. All right, sir. So um, Reema Yusuf uh, wants to know where exactly the clinic is. So the clinic is in Dubai, just so you know. And um, also, uh, can, you, uh, can you give us uh, an, uh, an insight about how one particular uh, operation or one particular surgery that you conducted on a person has changed your life? Has changed my life? Yeah. <laughs> like how, how much of a difference does it make to you changing other people's life this way? I, I, you know, I, I am a laparoscopic surgeon. I started off being a laparoscopic surgeon. So I did a lot of surgeries for cancer, for gallbladder stones, for hernias, various other things. But if you were to ask me one surgery that I've done that changes the life completely, that's bariatric surgery. It completely overhauls the person. The person not only gets rid of diseases, but also becomes such a confident person. So bariatric surgery is one thing when you commit, commit yourself to that patient, the patient commits themselves to you. It's like gloves, they stick to you. Okay, you do a bad job, you're trouble. You do a good job, they'll stick to you and they'll bless you for the rest of your lives. Okay. So does this mean that uh, once they, uh, for example, if they go through the surgery and they, they tend to put on weight because of not taking care of themselves in some way or the other, so does this mean that they have to come back to you for another surgery? Or, so, uh, or, yeah. will the weight, or the weight gain will be more than what they were before? Is that possible if they don't take care of themselves? So, you know, a bariatric surgery has come over a period of time where we used to do bands first and now the bands used to tend to put on weight and the sleeves start putting on weight. So there is always a chance at a second surgery. But that should not be the option straight up. You should have tried everything else. You should have committed yourself to a healthier eating habit, except in cases of super obese patients. In cases of super obese patients, we usually tell them for a two-stage surgery. When your BMI is above 50, we always tell you, we do one surgery, drop you down to a middle weight, and then before you start putting on weight again, around the two-year mark, we'll do a second surgery to get you to not near normal weight. All right. So would you suggest for people who are just around six or seven kilos more than their ideal weight to go under the surgery, go under the process of the surgery? Bariatric surgery, absolutely no. Even if you hold a gun to my head, I'll not <laughs> operate on you. So no. please don't do bariatric surgery if you have to lose just six or seven kilos. That's absolutely incorrect. Okay. Okay, so um, what are the other things that you would suggest for youngsters to be careful about for uh, avoiding obesity in their life? Just I would say prevention is better than cure any day. And that's what the governments of the world want us to do. That's what we believe. So we've started uh, a childhood program, all right, where we, where we uh, call it the Health Start program, where it's nothing about surgery. It's about trying to get children to know what are the healthier options of food to eat, what, what all they can eat. 
and I would just say that avoid sugar in any form. Sugar is this killer. So, you know, uh, the prophet had once said that avoid all forms of white substances, so salt, sugar, everything. And I think it is time that we start listening to that. Okay, uh, how about for the people who are actually watching this and are inspired to come to you, would you suggest for them to start, uh, do you have a process that you follow before and after the surgery, like if they are looking to come to you for help, how do they start working on themselves before they come to you? So I think, I think uh, you, can, you can see us for all options. It's not that necessarily that if you come to us, we're going to recommend a surgery and that's the only thing we're going to recommend. If you, if you believe that you're not of the right weight or the right age, to get operated and you don't need the surgery, we will tell you other options at weight loss. If you believe that surgery is the only go for you, we will ask you not to waste your time with other efforts and probably recommend the best form of surgery so that you can have a sustained long-term weight loss okay. and a better healthier life. Okay sir, so we have someone who's asking us what kind of food do we need to prevent ourselves from having to not become obese? Like I said, sugar, sugar in any forms, not the sugar that you just add but also the sugar that you don't see in salad dressings, in achars and pickles and various other things that you're not even aware of. Fruit juices, for example. I would rather say eat the fruit, don't have the juice. Okay. How, do you know how much sugar comes in a glass of orange juice? That's, that's sugar worth eight oranges that you've squeezed in. So you rather have, you can't have eight oranges at a time. And plus you've missed out on the fiber, you've missed out on all the other healthier stuff that is there in the fruit. All natural sugars are healthy. All processed sugars are unhealthy. Again, don't have too much of deep fried stuff. That's again not healthy. So stick to all eating all forms of fruit uh, and all forms of food. So carbohydrates, proteins and fat. God has given them all to us for a certain purpose. Don't avoid any food groups is my advice to you. Don't try and eat too late at night before you go to sleep. Use what the East... Asians do, the Japanese, the Koreans and all, they all eat before sunset. Uh, I think that's what we should do. The later you eat, the unhealthier you are. Alright sir, uh, one of them even wants to know if banana is advisable to go, uh, you know, to add on in their diet. So banana is a great, great uh, supplement to have, especially if you're going to exercise. So I would say that uh, people feel that banana has got a lot of calories and they tend to put on weight with that. But it's the best combustible form of energy. If you see most athletes, tennis players, cricket stars, football stars, on the field they actually have a banana. Why? Because it's the most combustible form of energy. So it burns your energy fast. Don't have a banana and then go to sleep. That's not right. Have a banana before you're going to exercise, half an hour before that, and it's very, very healthy to have. All right, so Jamila Hassan asks if uh, the surgery is covered in the insurance now. Uh, I think if you're diabetic and you have a host of other problems, if your weight is beyond a certain level, I think some insurances do cover you. Okay. So Joe Ibrahim uh, asks again what age you can do surgery because he's, I think, just around 18 years. So I think, Joe, you are, you're good enough. I think you can. If you're, if you're heavy enough, uh, then you should do the surgery. All right, sir. Um, okay, sir. Would you like to tell us uh, a few advices for people who are actually watching you and this video. So my only thing is that uh, for kids who are listening to me, please, please, please don't put on weight because it is going to make you unhealthy. Please go out and play more outdoor games. Please do the healthy things. Uh, please don't spend your time only eating sugary stuff don't eat pastas and pizzas for all those parents who are listening to me you are the ones who are responsible for your kids to put on weight so make sure they don't if they are going to eat unhealthy stuff use it like a treat that you can use for them at the at a weekend not on a daily basis um, don't avoid any food groups please prevent uh, becoming obese the moment for for most adults there the moment your belt starts getting one inch tighter or when you have to change the buckle length, that's the warning sign. Stop things there. Because once you've crossed a BMI of 30, 35, uh, and worse off 40, then it's already too late. Because then the, the road back is going to be a very steep uphill climb. And I think it might become a tad difficult. Remember that your weight gain is like a spring. Every time you pull down and it gives pressure, it comes down. The moment you release, it goes up and recoils so it always goes higher than where you started off with and that's the big problem with weight 
it's a lifelong, it's a chronic, it's a relapsing disease. So don't mess around with it. Try and solve it soon. All right, sir. There are a few young girls who are willing to go through this surgery, but uh, they wonder if it would be an issue for them to get pregnant when they are ready to have children. Yeah, so I've, I've, I've heard this many times. You know, in fact, I've done a program at CNN just on infertility. Uh, uh, polycystic ovarian disease uh, is directly linked with infertility and the more, more obese you become again there are hormonal problems in males the sperm count does go down so again it interferes with uh, infertility what I would say is that if you've if you've tried other forms of uh, trying to get pregnant and not got pregnant then give bariatric surgery a chance but be careful that you don't get uh, pregnant within the first year after bariatric surgery you need a year and make sure you consult your bariatric surgeon before you attempt to do the surgery because what will happen is that you will manage to need some uh, things like B12, folic acid and various other things that you need in early pregnancy, your iron levels need to be good. So just consult your surgeon before you plan a pregnancy and then you will have an absolutely normal healthy pregnancy. All right, Lara Larjur uh, wants to know if uh, a heart patient can go through this surgery. Yeah, Lara, we've operated on a lot of patients who've had open heart bypass surgeries, people who've had multiple stents in their heart because of diabetes. So that's not really a concern. Uh, what we do need to know is whether they are, their heart is in any fit enough condition. But that, I think, once you see a good doctor, he'll probably be able to tell you. All right. Um, also, there's another person who's saying that her children are indulging in a lot of fast food and juices. So she thinks her children are going to become obese. So if at all something of this sort happens how does she deal with it i think you have to get strict with your kids um, because uh, sometimes we say we can't help it well you always can i think uh, rather than blaming anybody else you should blame yourself if your kids get so addicted to sugar and various other things remember sugar is one of the most addictive substances ever produced or ever known by man so please please try and use whatever means if you have to get strict with them get strict with them if you have to make sure that you don't have any sugary drinks or any sugary stuff in your home or your your refrigerator make sure you do that make sure that you speak to the school authorities that your kids don't have that and use it as a treat make sure they have it over a weekend so they, they're not greedy enough to have it throughout the week all right so what about uh, losing hair after the surgery does uh, do people lose hair after the surgery so whenever you do lose significant amount of weight, you'll always lose hair because the easiest thing to lack uh, for the body to cut down nutrition on is your hair. All right. So what you should do is uh, listen to the nutritionist who are attached to the bariatric surgeon. Make sure you take enough of proteins. Make sure you take enough of multivitamins because then your hair loss will be reduced. And it's always for the first six odd months. So it's never going to be that you'll go completely bald and not have any hair at all. All right. So what is the normal BMI that we are supposed to calculate? So for an Asian, the normal BMI is supposed to be below 23.5. Anything above 23.5 is, uh, is supposed to consider as overweight or class 1 obesity. Uh, above 27.5 is class 1 obesity. Above 32.5 is class 2. Above 37.5 is uh, class 3 obesity or morbid obesity. Above 50 is super obese above 60 is super super obese and then they stopped adding supers after that <laughs> because you just got to a point so i think for for the westerners for caucasians add 2.5 points to whatever i've said and that's your bmi cutoffs okay that's perfect sir what about the stretch marks like after post surgery we are bound to have some loose skin and stretch marks right how do you go about dealing with that so quite often because of things like pcod pcos people already have stretch marks Sometimes when your skin is already stretched out to a large point, you have stretch marks. I think what we need to concern and what we should bother ourselves with is that this is a life-changing, a life-saving surgery. Uh, cosmetic options are always there. There are plenty and we've got enough of good plastic surgeons who will give you good options for your stretch marks. But don't um, rob yourself of an opportunity of getting a better, healthier life just because you're scared of the stretch marks post the surgery. Okay, uh, we are aware of the problems that obesity can cause for most people, but uh, can obesity also lead to cancer? No. Obesity, uh, the last CDC report said that 40 different types of cancers are directly linked to obesity. So in women, there is a direct link of around 20% higher chance of uh, uterine cancer, breast cancer. In men, Large intestine cancer, prostate cancer, and lung cancer is directly linked. 9% higher chance of you. So 
you know, today they say that 40 different types of cancers are directly linked to obesity. So once what we thought is that bariatric surgery actually caused the cancer, it's the multiple years that you've been obese or overweight that has caused this cancer, not bariatric surgery. All right, Jamila Hassan wants to know that uh, uh, if a lady went through a surgery and the following month she figures that she's pregnant, how does she go about dealing with that? Would that affect the baby? Yeah, so that becomes a little problematic situation. Yeah, so like I said, we, we don't want you to get pregnant. And if, if it weren't to be a precious baby, maybe you can abort that baby. Now, if it is a precious baby and you desperately need that baby, uh, make sure you see your pediatric uh, nutritionist at the earliest so that we can try and help you get a healthier baby. All right. We also would like to know why people don't usually disclose if it's such a big problem, obesity and dealing with, uh, you know, high BMI. So what happens is that I tell you, uh, it's not macho to say that you've had bariatric surgery for weight loss. It always is so much more macho to say I exercised, I ran, I, I went through healthy nutrition and various other things. I've sat through interviews like this one where I've sat across the, the table where someone's actually got operated and the interviewer's asked me that, but this person's saying that he's not had surgery, and you say that once you reach a certain BMI, you need surgery to get fit and healthy. And I smile, and that person smiles because of confidentiality. I can't speak. And he eventually leaves, leaves the TV interview and then says, thank you so much. <laughs> so whenever you've lost more than 100 kilos, invariably you've had bariatric surgery. We surgeons are brilliant now at hiding scars. So don't get fooled. Uh, the chances are that 99.9% .9 that person's had surgery when they've lost so much weight. All right. So, uh, Jamila Hassan also wants to know if the surgery and the process is too painful to handle. Like I said, you go home the next day, it's not even as painful uh, as probably getting a gallbladder surgery or a hernia surgery. C-sections are 10 times more painful than bariatric surgery. So that's I'm just giving you a comparison. Okay, so uh, once you're done with this bariatric surgery, what if someone gets an attack or a heart issue? Will, will they be able to go under the It's like normal. Process? It's like normal. Okay, it's happen. like normal irrespective of whether you get a cancer, whether you get a heart ailment, whether you need a knee replacement, whether you need a cataract surgery. It's absolutely normal. There's no change at all. Okay. What about the medication after the surgery, sir? Is there, a, is there like a prescribed medications that we have to continue for all our lives or does it stop at some point? So certain surgeries need you to take multivitamins like B12, calcium and iron. Like I said, bypass surgeries, all of them do. Some surgeries will tell you at least for the first six months, take enough of proteins because your intake is less. But other than that, there's no lifelong. In fact, most, most of the patients are taking anti-diabetic medications, anti-hypertensive medications, various other things. That kind of comes down and then we don't give them medications any longer. All right. Um, thank you so much for spending a lot of time with us and giving us an insight about this whole thing. It was lovely talking to you. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.